I believe God always wants to save. He always wants to heal. He, he always wants to pour out his spirit. But I also believe he has to do things in this earth realm to prepare the hearts of people to receive that. And I believe that when that is compounded by the fact that he's trying to, he may be trying to do it not just for one, but for many, for culture, for a country, for a region, then it takes longer for God to get the atmosphere, the hearts ready, enough prayer that's been released, repentance that has occurred. Sometimes changes that need to be made among leaders and uh, even the wineskin of the church being prepared for what he wants to do. So God waits for the right time. And the, so the, the right time is not just when God gets around to it or feels like it. The right time is when the conditions are now right. Does that make sense? So I said that just to say, I believe conditions are right for this outpouring, this deluge. Conditions, <clears throat> excuse me, conditions are not right because enough people who are sinners change, and because they're, they've changed, God can now do this. That's putting the cart before the horse. God doesn't come and send revival because enough bad people change. God sends revival and then bad people change. So you don't, <clears throat> excuse me again, and I didn't say that, I said that so you'll know the fact that society is still steeped in sin and rebellion and government is and people are in a, in a nation, that does not mean it can't be time an opportune time for God to begin to do this. He's not responding because sinners cleaned up their act. He's coming to clean up their act. You, you see the difference? So it is, it is not challenging to my faith to, to believe or say it's time for a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Even when I see just horrible sin and deprivation around me. Because I know that when, when the, all those conditions become right and God says, now I can do this, when he starts pouring out his revelation, Holy Spirit starts moving in, in significant ways, signs and wonders start taking place, everything starts to change. So these cities that have become evil, evil with evil leaders that I mean I don't care what I don't care what anybody says if you say it's okay to abort a baby and if that baby survives and it's laying there on the table you're just going to kill it and some of these guys these idiots now trying to say we want to give people a few weeks to think about it and up to 28 days or so, they can go ahead and finish the, the job. I mean, I don't care. I don't care who you are, what you believe. That's evil. I mean, it's just evil, wicked, heinous stuff. Taking the body parts of these babies and sell them. It's like, are you kidding me? These people are wicked. And some of these places where it goes on, and they seem to just really... Just, just laugh at anything else. It's like, well, God, I mean, you can't really, you can't really forgive those people, can you? I mean, I'm just ready for you to swallow up New York and just let it sink into the ground and disappear or places in California or something. We don't really need them, God.
he's trying to arrest my attention and say to me, that's not how I feel. That is not how I feel. I hate the sin. I get angry over it. But I love those people. And you just give him half a chance. He's going to pour out his spirit there and turn it around and save millions of them. So when the conditions get right, when it's the right time, not because he's in the mood, but because the circumstances are now right. When it's the right time, if he gets the right response, and he, he's going to get the right response in a lot of these places because Holy Spirit's going to invade the atmosphere. At some point, you have to believe he's going to do what we can't. We're going to have to do our part, but he's going to do the rest. He's going to bring the power. He's going to, he's going to flood the atmosphere with his presence that begins to lift the veil, not only individually from people so they can see, but the veil will begin to lift corporately, regionally. He needs somebody that will walk the streets and pray and sow in tears. So he can come and prove himself to a generation that he loves so much. And he's longing to give them mercy. And he's coming. I don't care what anybody says. Don't you listen to the fools who say he can't do this. Don't you listen to the religious crowd that says this country or some other country is too sinful. He can't come and do this. That's why he does it. Don't you listen to that because he's coming. So, Lord, bring us back to basics, to your heart. To understanding what it means to just be a conduit. To, to be an instrument of your mercy, your love, your power. As I'm sure as I'm standing here today, you're going to save some universities. You're going to transform some neighborhoods, starting with the people. You're going to clean up parts of this country that people think are so far gone they're beyond hope but they're not beyond hope they just need a real good revival an awakening an outpouring of your spirit they need the river to get there and we're gonna we're gonna feed the river and we're gonna get it to these places we're gonna be the jar and the salt we're going to heal cursed people and places. Amen.